What's going on guys? I'm Frank, and in this Armor 3 video, I'm going to show you how to configure and change the weather settings for your Armor 3 mission. So to get started, we're going to click the uh, cloud and sun icon up here. This window allows you to change and configure all the weather settings for your mission, as well as the date and the time that the mission starts at, the name and description of the mission. The name and uh, will appear when in the lobby for the mission, when people are trying to select the mission to host it, as well as uh, in the server browser, the name will appear for the mission under the mission uh, line. Uh, then we got overcast. This is how cloudy it's going to be. So if you set it to zero, it won't be very cloudy. But if you set it all the way to 100, it's going to be a full overcast. And uh, basically, it will most likely rain. Usually, the higher the overcast, the higher chance of rain, even if rain is disabled, by the way. If you have it set to manual and it's zero, it will still eventually rain in your mission. It's just how ARM is. Even if the overcast is zero and there is not a cloud in the sky, at least in multiplayer, it will still rain in your mission, or it has a chance to rain. It's just fucked up armor. There is no fix. But anyway, then there's fog. Uh, basically, fog is not volume. This is not volumetric fog, by the way. It just, for generally, it's fog. You understand the basics of that. Then there's rain. Um, this increases the intensity of the rain, not the chance of rain, but how heavy it's raining. So if you set it to 100, it's going to be a heavy downpour. If you set it down to like maybe here, it'll be a bit more of a drizzle. Uh, for lightning, um, if the higher the value, the more frequent the lightning storms will be, the, or the lightning strikes will be, and the lower will be the less frequent of the lightning strikes. Then you have waves. Obviously, this affects water. So if you have it, if you're gonna have a really stormy mission, it's good to have really high uh, wave intensity. Um, basically, this is cool if you have like ships or diving missions. Where there's gonna be like big waves uh, moving them around because they're the physics water physics does affect that stuff uh, then there's wind um, wind actually also affects uh, mods like AGM or ace or CSC you know whatever mod you're using that has wind in it and this wind parameter is taken in consideration for that and wind uh, will also change the physics of uh, how flags uh, blow and grass and trees and stuff like that um, the sh then you got the, the strength. This is the strength of the wind. So the higher the value, the the harder the wind will be blowing. So if you have it really high, then you're gonna have a lot of uh, uh, wind resistance with your ballistics and uh, ammunition, and also uh, you'll see it blowing like flags and shit like that as well harder. Um, so if you're doing a sniper mission and there's a flag with uh, near the target kind of like that one Call of Duty mission in Call of Duty 4, then you could actually do that shit in Alma 3 as well, more realistically. Uh, then there's gusts of wind. This is uh, the frequency in between uh, the, the gusts. So if you have it high, then there's going to be a lot, of, like, the gust, uh, there's going to be a lot of wind gusts in, uh, with short periods of uh, pauses in between the gusts, rather. So if you set it low, like here, then, you know, it'll blow, and then it'll wait a little bit, and then it'll blow again, stuff like that. There's also wind direction, so uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. I don't even know how to explain it other than wind, the, the direction that the wind is fucking blowing, so there you go. And then there's time of change, so within the first 30 minutes of this mission start, by default, this is the value. You cannot set this lower, by the way. 30 minutes is the default and the lowest uh, setting. Within 30 minutes, let's say the mission starts at 25, uh, overcast, all these settings here 30 minutes later in the mission will be this. So you typically, if you're gonna have a public server mission, maybe you want to set it to like four hours or something like that, um, or higher. Who knows? You know, you can do all kinds of shit with that, and it actually is. Uh, it actually works pretty cool when you have storms actually rolling in and shit like that, where because uh, it's you know slowly transitioning, it looks way cooler in a in a multiplayer in a public uh, persistent miss missions. And then finally, you have independents are friendly too. So you could set who the independent faction is friendly to. So if you set it to nobody, independents are going to be hostile towards Op4 and Blue4. But if you set it to everybody, then independents are basically going to be friends with everyone. They won't engage Op4 or Blue4. They'll basically be another civilian faction. And then uh, if you set it to Blue4, you, you get the idea. If, it's blue, if they're friendly to Blue4, then they'll be an ally to Blue4 and will engage Op4. And vice versa with Op4 and Blue4. And that is it. Hopefully this video was helpful. Actually, actually, oh, one more thing. Uh, at the start of the mission, um, you could set the date and the time right here. And this is very important. A lot of people don't realize this, but setting the year, the month, and the day is very important for your mission because the, the star map and the moon 
is accurately portrayed in Alma 3. So if you could set like a, if you set the date right, you get a full moon, you get a crescent moon, you get a fucking, you know, uh, or if you don't want a full moon, then you could have it have no moon at all and it'll be pitch black pretty much at night and shit like that. Especially if you have a full overcast. Um, stuff like that. You, you gotta experiment with it. But anyway, that is it. That's pretty much the gist of it. So anyway, hopefully this video is helpful, and I'll see you next time.